Hi, welcome to the Enterprise 2.0 Workbench, Episode 9. My name is John Brunswick, and today we're going to be building our first ADF mobile application using the new release of the framework. We're going to be building an application to expose sales collateral that's stored in Web Center content by way of a plain old Java object that's then going to expose a web service up to our ADF mobile application. What we're going to show here is by no means exhaustive or comprehensive, but showcases a couple tips and tricks of things you might want to incorporate in your own applications. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in and take a look. So let's go ahead and actually take a look at a running copy of the application to get a sense of how all this comes together. If I go into JDeveloper, I'll go ahead and choose to deploy my application to the simulator and we'll give it a second just to start up. As we're waiting on the simulator to start up, I want to take a look inside Content Server to give us a sense of the content that we'll actually be looking at during the demonstration and see how all the pieces correlate together. If I go in and browse my contribution folders, you'll notice there are a couple folders here as well as content items. And these could actually be Word documents, any sort of item. And what we're going to do is actually make use of the conversion services to end up displaying the web viewable format of that given content item. If I drill into product catalog and drill into user experience, You'll see here we have a number of different files around Web Center Portal and Web Center Sites. So these are the files that we'll be looking at within the mobile interface. Let me go ahead and head over to our simulator. And we'll see that we have our mobile application started up. And if I page over, we'll see that our doc browser application is right here. Let's go ahead and load up the application. Behind the scenes, it made some calls back to a web service that we have sitting on top of content server. And these are the same folders that we saw earlier. If I drill into product catalog, you'll see that we have BI, CRM, ERP, and then user experience. If I head into user experience, I'm showing a couple of the content items in that folder. And if we specifically drill in on Web Center sites, I get a detail page that allows me to click the view content button to look at the content item, the web viewable version. Underneath the covers, when I click the view content item, it actually used a iframe to pull up the web viewable for format. You can go ahead and kind of scroll up, scroll down, and then go back to our prior page. If I click the home button, it'll take us back to the home of the document library. Now, within this uh, folder structure, again, it's directly mirroring what we have behind the scenes here in Content Server. And again, we're ultimately end up viewing the web viewable version of that given item. And this extends to even the images within the system here. So what we'll do, we'll now take a look at the code that powers this to get a sense of, again, how all of these pieces came together. So if we go into JDeveloper, Let's first take a look at the web service that's actually supplying the data to our mobile client. Now, one of the things that we've done here, and this is definitely not a best practice, we're leveraging RIDC to call into Content Server and then ultimately expose a very specific set of methods in a web service for our mobile application. RIDC actually encapsulates web service calls in and of itself. So again, architecturally, there are probably some better ways to approach this, but this is just for the sake of demonstration. In our operations.java file, we have a couple of the key operations that we're using at the mobile level. And these include doing things like getting documents for a given folder or pulling back a specific set of folders if we provide a parent ID. Within Content Server, these are called collections, so we're always using the collection ID to go ahead and reference these areas within the system. Now, when these methods are called, they end up returning arrays of given objects. And so, if we go ahead and look at something, for instance, like the content item that is returned in an array, the content item actually represents what's in our content server. 
So the nice part, whenever we're calling any of the web service methods available to us in the web service that we've created on top of operations.java, it again is exposing all of the kind of basic content server functionality. Now our application, the ADF mobile content sample, calls into those services and then exposes those services by way of data controls that we've built on top of the services. So this gives us an opportunity to do something like use this get content view method that then returns the folders and the items within a given folder. The beauty about this is we get to use all of the data binding available in ADF within our mobile application. And so if we take a look at the project files for our mobile application, we can see here that there are fundamentally two pages that make up our application. There's a doc view page and a detail view page. And within each one of these pages, what we're able to do is we were able to use the data controls and drag and drop the uh, entities here that we see in the data control into our UIs. And so if we go for a moment into the doc view UI, this is actually what's powering the experience where we saw the listing of folders and the listing of documents. And it's doing this by virtue of two uh, different controls on the page, two different components. So if I open the preview mode and take a look at the structure of our page, you'll notice that at the top there's a row.collection name and below that we have a row.title. Both of those are actually list views that are bound to a web service call that we're making to content server. And what ends up happening, this, this data that we're looking at here from our web services call, it's all managed in the bindings layer, just like anything else that we would be working with in ADF. And it's actually uh, instantiated using this get content view method with our web service. And again, that get content view is actually pulling back a uh, result set that includes folders, as well as content items. And so if we go back to that preview, what's also happening, when it goes ahead and renders these lists on the screen, depending on what area we click in, so if we click on the view folders area, what we're actually able to see is that we have something called a property listener set up on any one of the items in the list. And what that property listener does is when a row is clicked within the list here, it's actually going to go ahead and take the ID for that given row and it's going to associate it with a managed bean attribute that we have within the scope of our page flow. So if we think a little bit more about how that works, for any given part of our application we might register a bean and this bean can act as a storage container throughout our application. And so again, in this case, what we're doing is we're setting a value for the selected node depending on what folder we've clicked here. If we go back into our bean, this is nice because it's set up almost in the way the web service uh, uh, Java object was when we looked at the services layer, where we have a series of settings here that are exposed to our UI layer. We have things like the selected node that we looked at, we also have attributes like the document URL and the document name because these are things that we might want to save and persist throughout the user experience. As we scroll down a little bit further, what ends up happening, what we do is we take that identifier and we use it whenever we want to refresh the screen to get a new listing of folders. And again, that's happening by virtue of uh, something that we pass back to the content server web service as a collection ID. So as an example, when I click a folder in the application, I'm actually firing a method that is called get collection that resides in this bean. So unlike a backing bean which is directly associated with a specific page, this docbean.java is associated across all the pages within our application. 
So what I'll do is we talk through it a little bit more. I'll actually fire up the example so that we can reference the running UI and I can explain how it binds back to this. The key, uh, and this is described in a prior blog post, the key to getting the web viewable format of the document then in the browser is a call to some custom JavaScript. And much like anything we do in our UI layer when we click on a row or when we click on a button, we have a chance to set up a correlation between that button and something like the call framed document JS method in this beam. So let's actually, we'll go to our, back to our doc view here. And what you can see at the list item level as I'm clicking on uh, a particular folder in the list, not only is the set property listener going to capture the node ID and persist it in the beam, but we have something called an action listener, which is going to make sure that when a row is clicked, it's going to take us back to the same page that we're on. This is called show docs. Show docs will always show the folders, it'll show the documents, but what it's going to do is it's also going to invoke this get collection method again in our managed bean. And so if I go back to our managed bean and look here, the get collection method is going ahead and using the selected node and setting that selected node with the new value of whatever was clicked in our list. And the way that we're able to refresh this view is by way of an executable in our data binding. So this doc load, this just tells the system to go ahead and make the web service call again any time that we use the get content view. So this will keep refreshing the UI. So let's go to our example for a moment. I'll go back to our doc browser. And once the system loads up, when I click on product catalog, it went back to the same exact page template. But what it did underneath the covers was it called back to the get content view method in our beam that calls back to the web service to get the items and repopulate the list. Now, as I drill through a little bit further and actually click on an item, for instance, Web Center Sites, when I click on that, there's a View Content button. And if we look at the Detail page, our Detail View page has that View Content button. And if I look in the Structure panel, what we can see is that View Content button actually goes ahead and when it's clicked, it calls into the call framed document JS. And this executes our custom JavaScript method. So one of the things that we wanted to do in our application is provide an opportunity to actually view a web viewable format of any document within the system. And the way we were able to do that was by including a little custom JavaScript. And so again, in our managed bean, we have a method called call framed document JS that is bound to that button. And what we're doing is we're passing the document URL into a custom JavaScript method called show framed document. That method exists in this file docview.js, and this is actually the JavaScript that extends the viewing window to include an iframe that as the source of the iframe includes our document's web viewable URL. Now, when we set up our application, one of the things that we want to do is to go ahead in the ADFMF feature.xml file and for uh, a given feature within the system, when we look at the content associated with it, so here we can see we have um, a document browser page, which is our docview.amx, and we also have a second content item here, which is our uh, detailview.amx. We actually set up an include for our JavaScript. 
So we make a reference here to the docview.js. And so again, everything that we're really doing in our UI ends up getting routed through our managed bean here. And that's all done using the structure panel and locating the different components within our structure panel and then using the property inspector to tie those items back to methods within the bean. So again, if I look at something like setting the property listener for somebody clicking on a folder, I can go ahead and using expression builder, I can actually navigate to look at my manage bean and select the area that I would like that data to end up in. So again, taking something like a collection ID, which corresponds to a folder, and populating the selected node. So this is a very brief walkthrough, but I hope that it provides some understanding of some of the structure, where fundamentally we have a series of flows between our given pages within the solution. And within each one of those pages, what we're able to do is use the different components to bind back to methods within that managed bean. To actually create the pages, we were able to open the data control that we created on top of our web service. And that's done in the standard way that we would, uh, regardless of whether or not it was ADF mobile. So just as any ADF application, we can right click our project, select new, and create a data control that maps back to the WSDL that we have for our uh, service that exposes content server. And after we do that, we get the visual representation of that service, and we can simply take a entity from that service and drag and drop it into the user interface here to create what component we would like to represent that data. So at the end of the day, these different pieces can come together to again give us this simplistic but at least um, kind of example that proves out some of the basic concepts within ADF Mobile using some existing services that we have.